Welcome back to the morning show here on the Rise News. I am Adesua Omoruan. I'm Rafael Yusini. And I'm Sheito Atigari. Good morning. Oh, yeah. Now, the ongoing battle to begin charging for unstructured supplementary service data, USSD transaction, has generated a lot of controversies and accusations back and forth from banks to the telcos. Um, Rafael. That's it. Uh, recent accusations by telecom companies has it that banks were the biggest beneficiaries of the USSD charges. They also accused bank executives of making unfounded allegations against them. According to the Association of Telecommunications Companies of Nigeria, it plans to start charging customers four naira for 20 seconds of the unstructured supplementary service data fee was not, the, was not the idea, and that bank executives are making unfounded allegations against them. Now, joining us on the USS to talk about the USSD charge allegations is Mr. Olushola Teniola, president of the Association of Telecommunications Companies of Nigeria. Welcome to the show, sir. Great to have you, sir. Good yes, morning. so the banks have... MTN was the first, uh, you know, telco to come out and send a text message saying that these charges are going to take effect. And then the banks came out and said, no, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't say this. And now a leaked memo has come out with a, a letter showing that they, in fact, agreed to these terms. What, what's your reaction to this? Why are we having this back and forth? Is it because of the outcry from, from the people? I guess that's the reason. I think social media has played a strong role in this. If... Uh, there was this outcry uh, from the public. I think this would have been quietly dealt with in a manner in a meeting that would have eventually resolved this issue. And why do I say that? Because um, prior to this, charges were still being made on various platforms, technology platforms, uh, to consumers. And it varied according to which bank and which platform you were trying to uh, access your banking account from. Uh, in the case of USSD, um, and uh, I don't want to go into too much of the technical aspects, but because this is purely a commercial uh, disagreement, uh, both in the way they should be charged and who charges, and what the Association of Telecoms Companies of Nigeria is trying to uh, um, arrive at is that there isn't any double billing. Because on a transaction, whichever form of transaction, there should be one bill to the client. Now, we can argue about is the, the charge excessive, and that's probably a different interesting debate because I think um, why there's been some disagreement and anger is that over the years in the past, uh, there was SMSs. I mean, we receive SMSs. We know that those are regulated, and it's for Naira. I mean, everyone knows that it's for mm -hmm. Naira. Um, and then, obviously, there was a revenue share in between the operators and the telcos. So there was no argument and disagreement. USSD is slightly, somewhat different. Uh, it's a different service. Um, in my experience, it's not really used over and beyond just simple, basic services on net for an operator. So it doesn't uh, take up too much, too much or too many resources. And, uh, it wasn't intended to be used as a commercial entity. So... Uh, you tend to find that most telco-driven uh, USSDs are just basically free. Therefore, information purposes or very basic, you know, do I, uh, how much is in my account? Because we are a prepaid market. We don't get mm. a bill at the end of the month. Not everyone anyway. So um, in the case of uh, trying to expand this, obviously there's commercial reasons to do it. Um, and the banks obviously charge the, the bank account. Um, but I believe that the telcos were complaining that we weren't getting the right amount to cover the oh, costs. So the banks charge, charge the bank account? Yes. And they don't pay the prerequisite money to the, the telcos. telcos? That's correct. So, so the so banks are doing the telcos over? I wouldn't use those terms. <laughs> uh, pricing of any telco service is regulated by the NCC. So the NCC stepped in. Rightly so. Because... Uh, we want to improve financial inclusion. And the best means is through the mobile device. We have 173 million subscribers. It's a huge number. And it gives a potential for inclusion. Because those that hold those devices, not all of them have bank accounts. So if you talk about those that have bank accounts and a mobile device, that's where the issue is. 
uh, because who determines exactly the charges applied to those accounts? And I believe it might be the CBN under a CBN framework. Well, the CBN is, is crime file. The CBN is saying, I've told, I mean, the CBN governor, Governor mm -hmm. Mifile came out to say yesterday, I've told them to reverse it. This is not a good deal at all. You can't pass this on to Nigeria. So the CBN governor, it's even against you guys. The operators, the license operators. So I'll address the CBN governor's statement after I con conclude what the issue is. And the issue is that NCC intervened, rightly so. There were various stakeholder discussions. I think the CBN governor even alluded to the fact there were discussions in the past five months, I think he said. Five months ago. So yes, so let's take it, wind it back five months. Those discussions did happen. It resulted in a determination, a legal determination of USSD pricing. It's a document, I think 13 pages long, signed by the EVC of NCC, where they've actually agreed amongst the stakeholders Banks were present, banks were present, the mobile operators were present, VAS operators were present, and a few others. And they agreed to this document, signed, approved by the EVC as the way forward in charging for USSD sessions. So what was the so let, let, pricing? Let, 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 uh, uh, I'll come, because it's important. Remember, mm -hmm. the banks was, were already charging, like they were charging for SMSs. So, the operators, they are regulated by NCC, have a determination. They have a determination. It's by law. Mm -hmm. We've always been regulated by NCC, even the voice calls. So within the floor and the ceiling price, they set a price. They're allowed to do that. And it was meant to be effective from the 1st of September. MTN, as a transparent organization, advised their clients in October saying, this is what's going to happen. This charge is going to apply. But obviously, you can't have the banks charging for the same service and the telcos charging. Mm. So that's where the issue is. You can't have double billing. And that's what we've got to resolve. I see. Because it's always been a symbiotic relationship between the telcos and the banks for these services. And uh, you provide the infrastructure. The bank leverages on it to provide these services. And many will argue that perhaps this has been a sunk cost all this while. Well, five months ago, it came to the notice of the CBN governor who says the telcos and the banks should sort it out. But I'm asking, at what point did this become an extra investment for the telcos on infrastructure if you have had this symbiotic relationship in the past? What is the, necessitating this? The, the USSD platform, as I said earlier, is not meant and wasn't built to be used extensively for transactions that could take up to two minutes to conclude and may have interoperability problems with other systems. Remember, the GSM protocol and the GSM system that we use in Nigeria is 30 years old. I mean, they can't have foreseen that there will be a country where fixed line doesn't exist and everyone's using a mobile device to do everything. Everything, I mean everything. So the... GSM protocol is well-tuned for voice applications, which is what uh, we have used GSM to get to the 173 million subscribers. But the supplementary services were an afterthought. So there is additional infrastructure that's built around it to extend it and to ensure that it's robust enough and secure enough to ensure that if it's being used as a means to get to those communities that can't afford smartphones, mm -hmm. 2G feature phones, mm -hmm. then it is built accordingly. But there's no specification out there in the world that says USSD should have been used purely for financial services. So mm -hmm. in Nigeria, we have a peculiarity and it requires capacity investments. It requires fiber. It requires the USSD gateway to be uh, enhanced and built to enable the amount of traffic that uh, will be put on it, onto it. So it, do, it doesn't impact other services and starts to degrade a network where quality of service is an issue. Now, that is the reality. So we have a platform that's, to be honest, not the best platform we should be using. There are other ways to actually uh, to, to, to do this. So when you have almost every bank 
publicizing uh, short codes. I mean, it, it started off with a few. Now mm -hmm. it's almost know, out. It's, oh, everyone. Exactly. it's everyone. It's everyone. 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 I mean, it's like a dragon right now. I mean, it's, it's almost thick. like yes. It's like it's I've also got one, and got even one the mobile too, apps yeah. are the same. Everyone's got a mobile app. So mm -hmm. the mobile app isn't effective because it doesn't use the USSD platform. It uses the internet. Yes. So remember, you have a smartphone. So it's using more advanced technology mm -hmm. to access your same bank account, mm -hmm. and these charges oh. don't apply. So really, we're just talking about a specific aspect within this technology that's being so, used. So obviously to, it brings about more that, that causes a problem. And it's, mm. yes, it, which causes a problem, because it's a legacy mm. uh, uh, Okay, I, I really want to come in here now. I want you to react to what the CBN government said, but I also have a couple of quick fire questions and allegations that the bank has made. They said, uh, demand to banks to subscribe to corporate level billing compels them to pay 4.5 for 20 seconds naira. Uh, the US as a cost would destroy financial inclusion. That's what the banks are saying. The cost will also render laudable uh, financial institutions in of the federal government unsustainable. Uh, reverse corporate billing gives no visibility on actual session used, forces banks to pay for failed sessions and leave back exposed to spurious USSD claims. It's also proposing the implementation of end user billing for the customer. These are the concerns, you know, of the banker that you're aware of. So, so uh, what yeah, would you address these concerns? Let me, let, me, let me speak to the CBN and then come on to yeah. the, the, the frustration okay. that they're finding. Yeah. As I said, it's a legacy technology. Mm. So basically, you're basically stretching something that shouldn't be used. CBN governor says sunk. It's not sunk. For the simple reasons you just shared, there needs to be enhancements built to address those. Now, uh, the USSD, uh, because now you've delved into sessions, um, they say it's uh, a certain amount of time we expect a USSD session, i.e. when you've re requested mm. to get a response to conclude. But the other side is unpredictable. That's the third party, and this is the banking systems. What about if there's a problem there? The NEEPs. I don't want to mention their system, okay. banking system names because I'm not in that, in that, in that, in that sector. sector. But yes, you can mention that. What goes on there? What about if there's failures? So there's an inter interoperability issue. Rich, remember, the GSN spec didn't know about NIMS, didn't know about all these banking systems, so it wouldn't have been designed for that. So you're using the wrong technology to actually enable this uh, type of inclusion, if that's the case. But they decided to choose the cheapest way of doing it. So so be it. It's the banks that need to improve the systems to ensure that it benefits their consumers. And then they have to absorb the cost, the full cost. And then if you separate the, the bank, that, those banking systems and the enhancements to it, which they've had to absorb the cost, not passing it to consumers, and you've used the SMS text messages system, and we have mobile apps, you're not, there's, there's no charge on the mobile apps, because why? You're accessing the banking system directly via the internet. So, and obviously we pay for data if you use your phones and not use the Wi-Fi. And we have to pay for the failed sessions. So, so therefore, the USSD, let me come up, the USSD platform is an infrastructure that has to be paid by the banks because it's not free. So there's no sunk cost. It's, there's investments made to do, to do it. Otherwise, if it's switched off, you wouldn't use it. You use another protocol. And that's what I have to make clear. So first sessions that are coming up, that, uh, that can happen. That's why you shouldn't Who use it. That happens almost every time. Yeah. Uh, almost well, every time. I, don't, I try to use the well, USSD. I, 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 don't, I don't use it, so I can't uh, corroborate that. But failed sessions are the reasons why you shouldn't use it for very long uh, sessions. Mm -hmm. in, in banking sessions, they are unpredictable. Like if you have a POS, you also have issues of failure. Mm -hmm. Those have to be addressed by the banks. You can't expose technology to consumers without regulation. Without regulation, let me we'll, stop. We'll without regulation, we'll 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 right back. Right back. Great to have you back. You're still watching the Morning Show here on the Rise News, and we still have with us in the studio, Ulushola Tenyola. President, Association of Telecommunications Companies of Nigeria. Thank you so much for staying with us. Really Before awesome. that break, uh, Rafai had asked you some questions, line, line, line of questions, and there was one you had yet to respond to particularly, and let me just refresh and bring back to you. Um, the greatest concern expressed by those who have feigned ignorance about the existence of this transaction is that it's going to destroy financial inclusion. Mm. Um, <laughs> that, that, that's a worry because the CBN governor has also said he is planning to bring into uh, the bracket uh, almost about 40% of ni unbanked Nigerians, and this would destroy that. How do you respond to this? Well, if 
the banking community doesn't accept that they can't arbitrarily add a margin that is quite excessive over and above cost recovery, then the statement that they've made is certain. The financial inclusion will not happen in Nigeria. However, this legal determination of USSD pricing that's already effective, and it's unfortunate that uh, the Honorable Minister told them to, to suspend. He wants to understand the issues around it. There might be a political angle to this, but uh, the way we've regulated the type of services, telco is by our regulator, and they are independent. They've, they're an independent body of experts. They've uh, called in international consultants, and the charge of four naira is within the range of the floor and the ceiling. Well, as I said, USSD is for free for certain services. So for what services? Oh, for general information. If you want to um, get a balance on your account balance, okay. account balance on your on your of your SIM card, those type of things, it's free. It's on net. Um, interoperability is, is a struggle, but. I, I think a lot of our networks, are, come on, they're quite extensive already, and they actually serve 174 or 173 million subscribers. So that's not the issue. Remember, there are those subscribers that don't have bank accounts. Well, we can access them already. You don't even need to use the USSD. You can use other protocols to access them. So this um, threat given by the body of CEOs of banks or whatever you call them, and the threat from the governor is of CBN is unfounded because there are other ways to actually reach these unbanked. And I think that what they are frustrated about is that the costs that they've passed on to the consumers, they need to bring it down significantly to also include this 4 naira or 4 naira 50, whatever the operator, because they're all different, will charge so that it is included inside that same price and there's one billion not double billing. So it's more of the timing. They've got to get their heads around the fact that they've got to drop their prices. And then that raises a question, why were the prices that high anyway in the first place? That social media has taken it upon themselves where people are frustrated that the price of accessing my bank account, my own money, is costing quite a significant amount that they don't understand why it's costing this I mean, I, I mean, you, I have, mentioned, <laughs> you have mentioned that, uh, you know, how uh, failed uh, sessions, the costs are, are transferred to consumers. And you've also spoken about independent con uh, contractors who regulate the back end for the telcos. But in this situation where we have the banks who are already charging a, a high sum for these USSD transactions, why don't we have any regulatory body making sure that we're not, uh, consumers are not being double billed, and then to go, uh, going forward, we don't have this issue between the telcos and uh, and the banks. What's a, what regulatory body well, have you put in place? The, you're right. I think the convergence of technologies is at play here. I mean, we have the banks that know that we're, they have to digitalize themselves. I said digitalize, not digitize, but digitalize themselves in the true manner, so they don't run. Um, uh, what you call uh, bricks and mortar operations in an analog manner and just plug on the t technology, sit back and earn money. That's not what this is about. They've got to truly transform themselves. If you look at examples, I have in other jurisdictions. I know we're not there yet. In the UK, we're, it's actually very rare to get to, get to a counter now. Everything's done automatic, automatically. So we've, we're on that journey. Um, it's interesting. Do we have a... Uh, uh, an umbrella regulatory body that regulates the technology that's coming out of the telcos and the finance. Finance, we don't. So we have to do with what we have. NCC is that regulatory body. The documents that I uh, referred to, the legal determination of USSD pricing, also made reference. I think there's a, there's a, there's a paragraph there that stated that this would only work through honest partnership and collaboration. The banks need to talk with the MNOs to arrive at a pricing that is amenable to the consumers. And in that pricing, the cost of providing a service should be given to the operators. And then the margin is reasonable. You know, it shouldn't be excessive margins. margins. I've been hearing cases of 20 naira to 50 naira to X, mm. Y to, I mean, come on, naira. this mm. isn't a platform 
just to fleece the consumers, especially the banking consumers, because it was built as a free service from day dot. And that brings me again to what the CBN governor said in a statement. He, he, he said he told, when this came to his notice five months ago, he told the banks to take it to uh, operators who would do this for cheaper or for zero uh, amount. And MTN has been singled out in all of this back and forth because they were the only ones who sent the message so far. And you have just said that more were to come because this was agreed upon. There's a legal document to this. Tell us about this. Look, let's be very clear. Uh, MTN were transparent in the way and manner they communicated with the clients. So actually, you should thank MTN for this ability to have this discussion. Conversation. Uh, please, I mean, MTN hasn't done anything wrong. They are entitled to inform their clients what's going to happen. And they have every right to charge for USSC sessions to recover their costs. There's, there's not a charity. They are a private entity. Uh, they are delivering a service that before now banks were using and were collecting revenue on. So the, the banks, bank the banks should remit the costs given to them. Now, the banks talk about the fact that the corporate billing, I mean, come on, they were taking advantage of bulk purchase. So even in the case of SMS, they're getting it below the price mm. that they were charging. That's not the argument. The argument is that actually beyond the price that they were getting, they were applying excessive charges to consumers. Mm. And it's very important to note that the price determination made by EVC holds and stands. It's a, it's a legal document. No one has broken the law here. What we're trying to prevent is double billing. Are there telcos, sorry, mm -hmm. are there telcos that will do this for zero amounts, no. as the CBN governor has, no. has indicated? So let me just say, that's a fallacy. That's no. No one goes into business to shut down their business and go out of business. That's not. So I wouldn't really want to address that because the reason why I don't want to address that because it has never existed in any society. This is not a free society. The cost of doing business in Nigeria is one of the most higher. So uh, I can't really a, justify that. Uh, and we yeah, forget that you. in a hurry. I mean, when, when we're trying to say reverse a cost, reverse a, we forget it's a free market economy. Market forces apply in this climate. Exactly. Let's talk about disruption because I like to talk about the future. Uh, same MTN. Uh, has just recently opened up the API mm. uh, for the mobile money platform. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. So a lot of developers can, can work on that. Let's talk about payments and the future of payments in Nigeria. Because I mean, I, I get really miffed when it's uh, uh, science, or when it's rocket science to make payments in this country. I mean, people pay with WeChat in China. Mm. People pay with WeChat in China, for, for Christ's sake. So having APIs, having mobile money, uh, uh, opening it up, what's the role of Galaxy Black Backbone in even all of this? You know, the federal government establishment so to have something where we can have open source. You don't, even, you don't even need to go to WeChat in China. Um, just go to our neighbor, Ka Ghana and Kenya. Yeah. Ghana, Ghana mobile money right now, mm -hmm. interoperability has been working for the last five months. This argument of whether it's bank-led financial inclusion or telco-led financial inclusion, it's not an issue there. It's a tussle, isn't it's, it? It's, it's, thank you. So this whole, I like this fact that we're talking, yeah, because it wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for this SMS that MTN has sent out. Behind the scenes, there's been friction. Who is going to lead this charge? Who is going to gain uh, the maximum benefit? It shouldn't be about that. It should be about the citizens. It should be about how do we improve the lives of your average Nigerian. And it's not about extortion. So if we refer to the Ghana uh, interoperability mobile money payments, if we refer to Kenya's M-Pesa, it's working it, very it well. It's working very well. So the likes of MTN are aware that the technology is there. They've opened up the APIs for mobile money. They can do mobile, uh, mobile wallets. And so can the other players like Airtel, Glow, let, and iMobile. So this is not exclusively about one operator. Let, let, it is about technology coming in to disrupt what was normally a manual system. You now have blockchain yeah. as a digital ledger. So yeah. we can't regulate technology and stop it. The banks are trying to regulate technology and to their own benefits, which it won't happen. The reality is that the technology resides within the telcos at the moment. Mm. The OTT players will have a say about that, but that's, that's a different that's, debate. That's, that's but it, irrespective of whether it's the telcos or the OTT players, 
there's a change happening. Let, let's talk extensively about this. And let's, I mean, for the sake of education, let's also start to talk about what it means as quick bullets to the USSD. Because we know this is a model that is jaded, for lack of a better word, very jaded model. And what are the other quick means? Let's, let's educate a lot of people out there. And quickly too. Well, I don't want to give too much away because I, uh, I don't want to be serious. Uh, I am not uh, employed by any of the operators, but I'll say one thing, and, uh, and it's a very simple one. Uh, the Internet protocol is now very much ubiquitous. So the operations of most telcos is now all IP. Uh, the OTT players, all IP. Uh, I would suggest that anyone who interconnects to an all IP network should also ensure that their operations are all IP. And I will also include their operational business model. The banks are not all IP. They still have this notion that they can sit back and just basically make money on an all IP offering. It doesn't matter which label you put against it, that's the way the technology is moving ahead. So there will always be those who try and be gatekeepers. Well, and in this instance, with financial inclusion, that the banks want to be gatekeepers. That's not going to happen because it breaks down when you have no IP in, environment. In, in 20 seconds, if you can, uh, what's your take on interconnect charges? We're counting days now to when Airtel and Globalcom consumers will have to disconnect. What's your take? And it's not the first time Globalcom is coming up. Yes. Uh, we are working with the regulators to ensure that they have access okay. to okay. much more. <laughs> we need to run. We'll talk about that later.